Hello, my name is David Halsey. I'm an orthopedic surgeon at the University of Vermont Medical Center, Orthopedic and Rehabilitation Center. Welcome to this segment on the treatment of osteoarthritis of the knee, goals for surgery. So unfortunately, if we're at this point, you're suffering from a painful knee and we've diagnosed it as osteoarthritis and we've tried all the non-surgical treatments. But here we are still with debilitating pain that keeps you from being able to do the things you want to do in your life, with your family, at work, and in your community. So the goals of surgery for osteoarthritis of the knee are pretty straightforward. Relieve pain, restore function, and get you back in the game. Get your mobility back so that you can really enjoy your years. So the question is, if you have significant symptoms of hip or knee, in this case knee osteoarthritis, that limit your lifestyle, and you've exhausted the full spectrum of non-operative treatments, what's the best option for you? Pain relief and restore function being the goals. So we actually have a series of surgical procedures that orthopedic surgeons do for osteoarthritis of the knee. And they can include removing the debris if you've got mechanical, sharp, catching pain. We have procedures that restore some of the joint surface and the strength of the surrounding ligaments. We can resurface the joint in small areas with biologic treatments, or we can actually replace the worn out segment. So let's talk about each one of those. Although it's a relatively small number of patients, some folks with osteoarthritis of the knee have sharp catching pain that causes their knee to buckle or even lock in a very uncomfortable position. No fun. We do have a treatment for those patients called osteoarthritis arthroscopic debridement. Big fancy name for remove the loose debris of the hard cartilage or the soft cartilage called the meniscus or any loose floating pieces of cartilage we call those joint mice or loose bodies. And for patients that have specific symptoms that we call mechanical symptoms, then simply going in as an outpatient and removing the debris and cleaning up the joint can be helpful for those patients, at least for several years. The next group of surgical procedures are really to try to preserve the joint, not replacing it yet, but preserve the joint. So for our patients under the age of 40 who have damage to their joints, we can remove the debris and actually try to stimulate new healing cartilage to come back. We can transplant cartilage and its neighboring bone into areas where the bone and cartilage surface are injured and sometimes we even need to straighten the limb through a procedure that divides the bone and then has it heal in a better position. But I will say that the vast majority of patients that we see have enough loss of the function of their knee from cartilage loss, bony response, and ligament tightness, too tight in fact, that the only thing we really can do that has a reliable long-term outcome is called joint replacement. But the good news is we only have to replace a portion of the knee if just a portion of your knee joint is worn out all the way. And you can see on these pictures that we can do what's called unicompartmental or partial knee replacement. PFJ, the initials for patellofemoral joint, that's your kneecap joint. That's a separate part of the knee that can also be resurfaced or replaced with surgery. Together, the partial knee replacement on the inside or outside of your knee or the kneecap probably accounts for no more than 5 or 10% of our patients. The majority of Vermonters and folks from upstate New York who have trouble with their knees that are really severe and haven't been helped by the medical treatments need a complete or total knee replacement. And that's the picture you see on the right. So the question is, how about me? What do I need to do? Do I have to have all of my joint replaced or, or try one of the other, other procedures? Well, it depends on how far advanced your osteoarthritis symptoms and signs are, and I mean your pain, loss of function, stiffness, contracture, range of motion, loss. All of those weigh into what procedure is best for you and the recommendations we'll discuss here in the office. Let's start with partial knee replacement. So if only a portion of the knee is worn out to bone on bone, then we only need to necessarily replace that portion of the knee. So that's what we mean by unicompartmental, one compartment, or partial knee replacement. Now you still have to have pretty good function of the rest of your body though. You have to have good muscles, good range of motion, and the ligaments need to be working well. That's why it's only about five or 10% of patients we see. 
There are definite advantages to less invasive partial knee replacement. It leaves your knee feeling more normal than a full knee replacement. Your recovery is faster. The risks are less. And hopefully, you'll get the pain relief you need for as long as the device can help support that knee. And what we know about that is, is that if you do a partial knee replacement, you should expect the same quality of improvement than you would get from a total knee replacement through the first 10 years, about 90 to 100 percent success rate. Now that's a very important number to consider, the success rate. And we mean in orthopedics by success rate how long you will enjoy the benefit of that procedure and still keep moving and have most of your pain resolved. So partial knee replacement is appropriate for when, uh, the patient who has just a portion of their knee worn out bone to bone. Traditionally, we've used total knee replacement to treat that same patient, but with better advancements in the technology, the, the surgery, and the components we put in, the implants, partial knee replacement is now a viable option for a subset of our patients. I like to think about it as the only knee replacement in my older patients. Again, they're not out looking to return to track and field or necessarily hike up and down the mountain, although many of our older patients do that, which is great. But if your demands for your knee are lower, then perhaps partial knee replacement in our older patients is, is a good idea. I also use partial knee replacement in my very young patients who have advanced arthritis in just one part of their knee so that we can preserve the rest of the knee, the ligaments and the other two compartments, the kneecap and outside compartment of the knee most of the time, and let them continue to serve you well for many years. So what should you expect from a partial knee replacement? Well, at one year, once you're fully recovered from the procedure, 95% of patients worldwide report good pain relief and restored function. Many of them say the knee feels just about normal and they have near full range of motion, some of the things they're really looking for with a surgical treatment. And well, how about after one year? So going out as far as 15 years, our research would say that still 85% of patients are enjoying good pain relief and restored function. And about 15% have gone on to have enough wear and tear in the other parts of the knee that were not resurfaced initially, and they get enough arthritis symptoms there that we have to switch from the partial to the full knee replacement. You might think of that as an upgrade. If you go through that process, you've still got about an 80% chance of having at least another 10 years of good function even after the revision or second knee surgery. But again, I spoke about 5 or 10% of patients. The majority of the patients we see as orthopedic surgeons in our office with advanced arthritis, the disease has involved more than just one compartment. So the inside of the knee, the kneecap joint, and oftentimes the outside of the knee, all three together. So we call that tricompartmental or three-compartment knee arthritis. If that's the case, then the best treatment is called complete or total knee replacement. We'll go into that a little bit more. It sounds like a terrible thing, right? Replacing your knee. But I think the best analogy that works for me in trying to help explain it to you in the office is, think about the tire tread on your car. As you go up and down the road over time, you wear down that cushion tire tread. The wheel rim, the metal rim, and the alignment parts of the front end of your car are still in good shape. But the bearing surface, the cushion that you use to absorb the shock absorption, wears down. Well, that's what knee replacement takes care of. We replace the ends of the bone that have worn and lost their cartilage with metal and plastic. And it's four parts, actually. There's typically a plastic button on the back of your kneecap, but not always. Sometimes the kneecap is in good enough health to not resurface that part. But the thigh bone and the shin bone are resurfaced with metal, and in between those two layers, a polyethylene plastic spacer. I'll show you those on the models. So this is a model of a completed total knee replacement. We're looking from the front, and now we're looking at the side view. The kneecap in the front, the thigh bone above, the shin bone below. As you stand, both bones are straight. Walking would be cycling through this range of motion. And when you go to sit down in a chair 
or a deep knee bend in that position. So from the front, fully straight and bent knee. And on the side view, you can see how the kneecap rides in that groove on the end of the thigh bone to give you power and strength. Once the surgery is completed, then the implants are uh, cemented to the bone in traditional ways. And some of our newest designs actually allow us to fix it to bone and you grow bone into the implants. That's an emerging technology that is certainly a good possibility for improvement in the future. So when it's all done, you have new surfaces on the end of thigh bone, shin bone, and most of the time your kneecap to restore alignment of the joint, range of motion, and get rid of that pain you were hoping to get rid of. So what are the advantages of knee replacement? Why would you undergo this big step? Well, clearly it's to get long-term pain relief and restoration of function. The downside would be it's a bigger undertaking to do total knee replacement than partial knee replacement. But like so many things in life, you have to invest a lot up front to get a good long-term result. Let's talk a little bit about the myths of knee replacement. We talk about these in the office all the time with patients. Well, I'm worried that it'll only last 10 years. I won't be able to kneel ever again. Will I even have a kneecap? And what do I do if it wears out? So to address each one of those, I'll walk you through what are the typical outcomes after knee replacement, and then we'll cover those topics. So at one year, knee replacement for 95% of men and 85% of women reported worldwide suggest that they will be doing well with their goals met, their preferences met, with good relief of pain and good restoration of function. And that improvement lasts a long time. You've got a 90 to 95% chance, if you have a successful knee replacement, to enjoy that pain relief and restored function for at least 15 years. A small percentage of patients will have already worn the knee out enough or have had loosening of the parts from the bone that they'll need a revision surgery, something we do here re regularly for our patients who've had implants in for many, many years. We do those revisions here now at the University of Vermont Medical Center. And again, if you have a successful revision or second surgery on the knee, you should be able to get back good pain relief and good functional restoration for at least another 10 to 12 years. So that's the information I wanted to share with you about knee replacement options for your advanced osteoarthritis of the knee. For more information, you can always give us a call here at the University of Vermont Medical Center, Orthopedic and Rehabilitation Center.